my young friend. I'm sorry to be so blunt, but I need to ask a favor of you. A delivery awaits me at the docks, a very rare orchid, all the way from the island of Madagascar. But there is a problem. One of my associates wants the flower for himself. He sent ruffians to collect it, if you can believe that. I need you to collect it for me first. Thank you, my young friend, thank you. This little orchid may seem inconsequential, but it holds secrets which could potentially change our very understanding of the world. It would have been a shame to lose it. Shame indeed. Thank you. My dear Darwin, do you think our young friend here, equipped with a multiplicity of talents, might be enough to ensure Mr. Hammond safe passage? 
I do not believe I've had the pleasure of meeting a Mr. Hammond. A mutual friend of ours. He arrives in London today. From South Africa, no less. Mr. Hammond is possessed of both tremendous wealth and charming innocence. Which makes him rather attractive prey for some of our great city's less savoury inhabitants. We fear he'll need a more robust escort than two old men might provide. I'm actually rather busy. We have already told him to expect you. His train should have arrived ten minutes ago. Then I shan't keep him waiting. Splendid. Off you go. Mr. Hammond, I believe? That is correct. Evie Fry. Mr. Dickens sent me to meet you. Now, good old Dickens. How very kind of him. Lead on, then. How's your brother? Not dead yet, I am. London. Can't say I've missed the weather. My father passed away recently, and I have come home to settle his affairs. Also, I am to be married. You don't sound too eager for the happy event. I have never even met my future bride, Bella Wilson. It was all arranged for me. She may be a good woman, or she may not. I stand to inherit a vast sum. Can I be certain that the lady is not simply in it for the money? One long Care to trade them for mine? I fear my wealth attracts too much attention. That did give me an idea. Perhaps I can test my bride's sincerity. And I hope it bleed nerve. You won't be stirring up no more trouble. And I hope it bleed no. Oi! I am now officially dead and have thus shed my fortune. I shall meet Bella Wilson as a noble. We shall see if she'll have me now. Come, we must dispose of my body. Find us a carriage to take us to the river. <gasps> Good work. How exciting. Now. This is like something out of a novel.
let us go and meet my fiance. I can't wait to see her response. Calmly. I feel quite liberated, as if a great weight has been lifted from my shoulders. Artemis, just to be sure, would you take me to my fiance's house? I shall deliver the ceremonies myself. Don't you think that's a little risky? She has never set eyes on me. Besides, I need to ascertain whether I like her as well. And I want to see how she reacts to the news of my death. Come on, hurry up! This is taking far too long. You're going the wrong way, I'm sure of it. There you go. Please hurry, I'm very anxious to meet Miss Wilson. Here now. Miss Wilson? You knew it, yes. didn't you? All right. My name is John Rokesmith. I'm afraid I have some terrible news for you. Oh? Your fiancé, John Hammond, was found dead in the River Thames this morning. Oh, how awful! Poor Mr. Hammond. I am at a loss at what to say to you, sir. You must forgive me. She is delightful. Why, I do believe I love her. I hope she's more intrigued than she is appalled. Cupid and I require your services. You remember that young lady I was engaged to marry before I came my head oh. so I could see what sort of woman she was? Well, I have good news. I'm now in love with her and I want to marry her after. And I need you to help. I have a rather artful plan. You, playing the part of a ruffian, will kidnap her. Then you must bring her to where I am waiting. I shall leap from a shadowy corner and beat you to a pulp, thereby saving her life and winning her heart. Have you thought this through? Now, put me down somewhere insalubrious and I shall ready an ambush for you. Somewhere in Lambeth should suffice. Slow down. Looks rough. Off you go and nap her. She's at Waterloo Station, I believe. Oh, and make sure you play your part well.
You're coming with me. Let's do this the easy. Oh, Help! I shall save you, madam, for I am John Hammond, your fiancé. What? Here we go. Oh, God! Take this, you rogue! Take your punishment! Clearly, I am a better. Take this, you rogue! Your punishment! <laughs> Clearly, I have your better! Take this, you rogue! Take your punishment! Clearly, I have your better! What a happy coincidence that you were here to save me. Wasn't it? And if you will allow me, my dearest Bella, I shall forever be by your side to protect you from this day forth. Come, my dear, let us be gone from this terrible place, and I shall explain all. I'm certain Mr. Dickens and Mr. Darwin would like to know of their friend's good fortune.
And so all's well that ends well. Our young lovers are united at last and will soon marry. I too hope to meet a man who will fake his own death and arrange my abduction just to see if I can be trusted. And by the looks of you, they really hit it off. <laughs> I must say, it's all rather exciting. I do love these sorts of tales. It all feels strangely familiar. I wonder why. We should drink to John Hammond and his unconventional idea of courtship. Indeed. To John Hammond, our mutual friend.